Hello, everyone, and welcome. We are currently on the Vardarin Derby horse racing server, which is a server I own. That is a dedicated server on V Rising. You can actually look it up. You can join if you want. It's a PVE server. But I'm not here to shill this just yet. I'll go into that maybe at some other point in the video. Or maybe some other time. Maybe I'll make a separate video advertising it. But for now, that's not what this video is about. I'm going to be doing a video that's a little bit impromptu, I guess. Um, I had a viewer ask me about, you know, my organizational methods and how it goes through. So I think in this video today, I'm just going to go over that so I can show you all the method to my madness. All right. So uh, come join me as I uh, show you the way, I guess. All right, so something you might notice first is the location of this particular castle. I put this castle right at the center of the map. It's the first castle I've made. I didn't even bother going through Fardbane or anything like that because I was already familiar with the game. I've been playing this game for months, so when I started again after Gloomrot, I already knew where I wanted my castle to be. That being said, the purpose of this castle, I call it the clan castle or the crafting castle the reason why i call it the clan castle the crafting castle is because this castle is purely crafting focused if you notice there's very minimal decorations i know you guys have seen some of my other videos where i'm working on the gloomrock castle uh, which is my third castle and also my castle walkthrough video of the uh second castle i made which was in silverlight hills but um you know I, i'm not going to go over that right now you can watch those videos on your own if you want to. They're out there. Okay, so let's start off with the layout of this place. If I zoom out, you can see I have my castle heart up front. Basically unprotected other than, you know, my doors, of course. But this is a PvE service, uh, server, so I don't have to worry about this kind of thing with, like, invasion and people breaking in my castle. Um, so luckily for me, I don't have to worry about that. If this is If you're on a PvP server, it might be a little bit different for you, so... I can't really speak to that, but uh, yeah, let's go over some of the organizational methods. Before I go over uh, my inventory spaces, I'm actually going to show you the layout of the castle first so that everything kind of makes sense as I explain the different items in my inventory stashes. So if we go here directly to the left, we have all of the paper making stuff. We have all of the uh, research stuff minus this over here, which did not fit. So then we also have, and mind you, this is a, this is a uh, two by two setup room. I have another two by two setup room, which is just for gems. So I have a bunch of different things uh, kind of here along the wall that are directly related to just this. Now you're probably wondering why isn't this with the rest of my stash? I'm getting there and you will understand why. I also like to move around my castle in wolf form. It's just faster and more efficient. So I'm going to go over here to the right. As you can see, I'm processing some stuff in the grinders. I have all my workshop items here. I have one facing this way, one facing that way. That way I only have to move minimally in between stations to interact with them. Same thing with this. And it's really rare that I used a woodworking bench. I could have placed it a little bit different to save some space. But I didn't need to. I wasn't constrained for space for the workshop, so I didn't bother. I also have a, um, a blacksmithing room. Notice that the floors are matching. Uh, for those of you who are newer, maybe you don't realize this yet, but the floors do matter in your castle. So, like, for example, if I interact with this fabricator, it shows me castle heart is ha castle heart powered. And because it's in a confined room, it has 25%. Confined room does not mean room with doors that are closed or closed off room. It just means it's a dedicated room, if that makes sense. So if you notice here with the pillars and arches, you can tell, oh, yeah, this is a whole room. So, you know, it, you have that. And then the matching floor reduces the cost of the crafting recipes by 25%. So that's why I have all of my floors kind of dedicated depending on what... Um, things I have if you have two different types of flooring in the same room they have to they, they are not going to give the benefit that you need the whole room that is dedicated 
has to have the same kind of flooring in order for that to work so like here with the grinder if you notice here with the matching floors you know 25 percent and all that so uh yeah so make sure you take the time to read what your uh crafting stations have as far as like the floors and stuff and try to keep all your crafting stations together depending on the type of flooring they need that way you don't have to spread out all your stuff the alchemy lab area i have the alchemy table i have all the squishers as i like to call them or the blood for us i call them squishers then you also have um here we have the tannery, we have the tailoring stuff, we also have the leather working table because the leather working station is also using the tailor's flooring. So with these two looms facing each other, the big item back here for the tailoring bench and the two tanneries, I find that with two tanneries, they tend to, it tends to be enough for me. Depending on how big your clan is, you might want more or less or even just your own crafting habits and how much you go through leather. So... I don't know like it seems to work out well for me now mind you my castle uh my server settings are a little bit different than the uh default settings so it's not going to be exactly the same for you if you're on a default setting server um but you know like i said earlier this is more of a educational slash inventory management video so hopefully this is helpful to you guys regardless and you're probably wondering what does this this uh red teleport pad bring me to this brings me to the furnaces now you're probably wondering why do i have so many furnaces well let me explain so the first one i have raw copper or copper ore being processed i can also make whetstones here i also have now mind you with the whetstones you know how i need like the the stone like the uh the stone dust it's right here so the only time i need to really go anywhere is just boom from there to there that's why those two rooms are close together because they share a lot of uh um well they share some materials back and forth this next one is just sulfur in it you're probably wondering what the heck uh normally i have glass uh sorry not glass gold jewelry being processed here and the gold jewelry is basically you know coming out and creating these gold bars here is where I actually process the sulfur ore. I also have sometimes put copper ore in here. If it spills over or I have too much copper ore and it doesn't all fit here, I'll just put some here. This furnace I use for iron. This furnace I use for quartz. This furnace I use for making scorch stones. This furnace I use for making radium alloy and this one i use for making dark silver ingots so if you notice i keep everything kind of separate and apart and the reason why is because i want to be able to go into this room like let's say i need a, let's say i'm here and i'm trying to make a specific thing and i'm like oh man i need radium alloy i know exactly which one to go to i go to the one at the end because i've already memorized hey this is where i keep the stuff to make the radium alloy so that's just an example of how that goes and you know kind of my method and thought process throughout that now for the forge room i also have a bunch of stuff so the smithy i have kind of squeezed into the corner here or squeezed within the inside of the anvil this is great because if you're going between different items having this workstation here like let's say you're already working on late game items having this workstation here is a great place to just drop a bunch of blood merlot so you can just put it all here and then when you're ready just grab it and go grab it and go grab it and go and it makes things so much faster also for the simple workbench i just kind of have it here in the center i don't really have a reason to use it most of the time unless i'm crafting something for a clan member who's maybe you know lower level fabricator is a fabricator this item takes up a lot of space and it's kind of awkwardly shaped so i decided to place it vertically within my castle I also have an ancestral forge that thing is over here in the corner the reason why i have it here and not here is because even though i see this door here i don't usually run that direction i usually run over here to grab something and then back over again so the idea is that i want to be able to travel between these places very easily i'm going to get into this uh, teleport pad in a second but not yet uh also here i keep my servants gear so i have on my server every castle can have up to 30 servants so i needed to make a lot of servant gear so in order to make all that gear i would have all my stuff you know my weapons are all here my 
um, stuff is all here for building, uh, well, sorry, for crafting, like, actual, like, clothing. And then, of course, all I have to do is hop over the leatherworking bench. That's why I have the bench here. And then I can immediately run into the, uh, the jewelry area. So... Yeah, so it's all kind of planned out that way, so I can just easily run back and forth. I grab the jewels, I go here, and boom, right in servant's gear. I also have crafting line, so for crafting line, I have my blood merlot. Uh, whenever you're crafting stuff, don't be like me and be an idiot and use 100% blood merlot for like the first few crafts you do. Um, it's okay to kill random humans in your cells if it means you just extract as much blood merlot as possible. The percentage does not matter when you're doing your craft, so it's good to kind of stock, uh, stock up on these. And of course, I have a little, another third spillover. If I ever fill up to this point, I stop milking humans for their blood. Here I, on the outside, I have my three uh, shards and I have a graveyard here. Now you're probably wondering, why do I have my graveyard so close to the castle? You know, don't I want to like jump off the edge? Yeah, I can jump off the edge and escape, sure. And I can go and I have easy access to this side of the road if I want to go over here to Bastion of Dunley. But most importantly, the main reason why I placed my castle here is so that it's near the Iron Cave. So I just want to make sure that I go over that so that you guys are kind of familiar with, you know, part of my reasoning and thought process. Here with this random water thing, I could place a fountain right here if I want. But I didn't want anything here closing off my movement because I do tend to move through here a lot, especially when I'm coming uh, from this section and I need, let's say, uh, let's say I need um, like the primal blood essence to make weapons or certain types of gear and stuff like that. So I want to be able to get to that first with my methods. I, I'm not going to go into all the machines and like what machine does what. The only reason why I did it for the furnaces is just to explain how why I have so many furnaces. Um, but yeah, when you have as many servants as I do, they tend you tend to run out of, you know, space a little bit. Um, this blue teleport pad brings me directly up. Now, the roof of this place, I'm going to go over first. This roof area is where I keep my farm. So I basically place as many plants as I can. My farm is not finished. I do not have everything finished just yet. Oh, look, and I have, and I just noticed a bunch of servants are now coming back from their mission. Perfect timing. So now you guys can see some of them uh, when they're walking about. In this room, I have a big room full for, um, well, not full, but I have a big room here, uh, basically dedicated to vermin. So let's say I, you know spawn certain types of creatures and they're all following and chasing me something i learned is that if you have your mutated rats and spiderlings in the same place they'll fight each other and kill each other so uh usually uh at least from what i've seen the mutated rats usually went out i think but it's whatever so what i usually do as I'll pop in through this door, and you're probably wondering, why do I have two doors? Well, this is why. And I'm also, I, I close it off to servants because I don't want them going in here and killing things when I'm not able to collect them. So that's another important thing. So I run in, I go ooga booga, and then I run over here into this corner. And then when everything finally gets over here, that's when I start using my spells. I pull out my spear and I just kind of go ham on all of them and i just collect them all here it makes it so much easier so that i'm not fighting with accidentally clicking the vermin nests or selecting the vermin nests when i'm collecting items so that's kind of uh the thought process there just to make a little bit more quality of life for me as far as these random uh these random uh people in the cells here i have them basically around to circulate or to replace some of my weaker uh, vampire servants so that they're able to then have a higher expertise level and when I send them out I get more materials etc and then of course this is how you get up here from the second floor I have all these different types of blood so I'm gonna get to this in a second I put my I put my coffin right next to my uh, my chemist throne my plague chemist throne and as you can see, I have all my servants sent out doing various things. These guys are going to need like about five hours before they come back, but that's okay. 
here I keep my prison food. So anything to do with fishies or, you know, um, actually sac sacred grapes. I don't, well, obviously you're not feeding them to the prisoners, but you are for the radiant gruel, the fish, the rats. And I keep as many glass bottles as I can up here. And I basically make my blood Merlot or blood potions with it. I almost never make blood potions anymore just because I don't have to. And the blood Merlot is a little bit better with uh, misery and it's also well tastier and more useful uh, more useful more versatile as far as like the purpose of use etc etc so here i have three workers in a row 100 percent workers i think like two of these guys i ended up having to use a radiant rule to upgrade but that's kind of like you know besides the point long story short i keep all my prisoners on one place i keep them behind locked doors so that my servants can't get over here and talk nonsense into their ears and convince them to try and escape then i have worker blood here uh you know filling up i have warrior blood i got my brute blood i got my rogue blood and like i said earlier i have my scholar blood and these uh particular um these cells these prison cells are all kind of randomly placed throughout i kind of tucked them in wherever there was like free space where my movement would not be uh stopped so uh that's kind of how i did that uh yeah and like i said going up here uh, this is my farm, right? I already showed you a little bit of that. And of course, I have to keep the, uh, the mist ears up here so that I don't die in the sun if I'm collecting during the day. This is also locked. Now, this room is very important. This is where I keep all of my servant coffins. Now, you're probably wondering, why are these all together and why are these two apart? Well, you see, these two servants have under a 25% expertise. Everyone else has at least 25 plus and once i replace these two when they come back from their mission i'm going to use the 84 percent you saw downstairs and also another one i can't remember the percentage right now off the top of my head i'm going to replace them with higher percentage blood humans so yeah that's how that goes over here i have all of my uh different you know servant coffins now the reason why i keep them kind of clustered really closely and in a row is so that when i summon them i'm just kind of going boom 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 summon 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 oh that's a weird glitch summon 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 and then once they're all out because i lock this door and they cannot teleport using these teleport pads they're all trapped here until i collect all the stuff i want from them that way i don't have to chase them around the castle looking for every single one to see oh where where is uh where is joe joe has my um has my 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 thingy you know insert item here and then i'm not like searching around for joe's coffin instead i just you know wait for them all to come back and i just summon all of them all at once and then when i use this teleport pad it brings me back to the first floor so any materials that i originally got from there i'm already really close to one two three four uh and then of course the one all the way over here would be five and six different uh um crafting station areas so i also have uh these different uh things here one thing i do want to note is that for this particular one here i have paper and coins i keep sawdust in there because you turn that into paper any kind of materials that are paper making related i usually keep in here uh, as far as the coins go i would actually like to keep a separate coin chest at some point i need to figure out where i'm going to place it though i have not decided i think the most likely candidate would be maybe over here or or even upstairs somewhere um i could i could place it maybe over here like right in front of this or i could place it like oh wait no there's a thing here i could place it here just for easy access and then go back down um but i haven't decided exactly where i'm going to place it yet so that that's something uh the reason why i brought up a big deal with the coins is because I have coins in my inventory all the time and hitting compulsively count will force them all in there and then i'm having to pick them out like oh yeah what coins do i need again so instead of dealing with that i just want to make sure i have lots of money and it's all in the right place castle heart is always at the front here just because when i come in after killing shit, i can just dump you know whatever um things i want to oh look 69 days that's funny and then i 
<laughs> and then I go over to, um, you know, I could go to empty containers. Now, empty containers, you're probably wondering, why do I put dust collars here in the empty containers? Well, you see, the dust collars I consider to be a capture tool, almost like Pokeballs, right? Like if you're capturing a human and you're trying to summon them to a castle, put them in an empty cell, uh, you know, one of your clan's empty cells, boom, that is exactly what you want to be doing. And so I call it, I put it under the empty containers tab because I think, you know, in concept and practice, it kind of makes sense. I also have a bunch of empty canisters, which I have to go and fill up in Southern Gloomrot at some point. I haven't done that yet. And this is also where I keep my glass bottles. If I don't have, uh, like if I have a bunch of glass bottles I want to use for various purposes, like making potions and stuff like that, that is all here and ready to go. I also have depleted batteries here because I do consider this to be a empty container because it has no charge. So I'm just kind of, you know, in my mind kind of use it like that now the filled water skins are here these were unfilled for a longest time and the reason why is because i just didn't get a chance to move them to my other castle um these are just chilling here but normally empty empty uh water skins would be here and just chilling if i if i really you know didn't have time to fill it up be like right after i make it so like for example if i make a bunch at the tannery I can just take it out, put it here, and then the tannery is going to keep going and producing more and more of those uh, filled water skins and it has more space to output. Here I have my drugs and bombs. So if you notice, I have um, all my drugs, any every kind of drug in the game I have here, and my bombs. So I have major explosive boxes right here. I keep drugs and bombs in the same place because I figure, well, you know, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I just thought it'd be funny to put them together, to be honest with you. Here I have my blood essence. So I actually just emptied this out. This was full completely. I, I basically fill it up completely after I, you know, make sure all my three castle hearts are completely filled. And I take it out and I put it to process. That's what these machines are doing right now. And then I put them here with the greater blood essence. These I then uh, get all the way up. And once this is filled, I process it and I bring it down to the primal blood essence. And once this gets filled up, that's when I'll stop for uh, creating primals. Then for the wood, let's say I come back from a, you know, a mission or a, or not a mission but let's say i go kill something right and let's say i come back from a place or whatever what i do is i run here you know i, I drop all my stuff off blah, blah 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 but a lot of times i'll have wood from the trees of nearby and stuff like that if i collect any planks picture frames types of wood etc etc i try to keep at least one here so that every time i hit compulsively count every single wood item comes out of my inventory and ends up somewhere in here now you're probably wondering why do i have uh, sawdust here and not in the other place well the reason is for space a lot of times i find that after i craft or sorry after i refine my wood i have plenty of space Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to put my mic there. I have plenty of space where I just add my stuff on the other, um, in the other chest. And if, sorry, I keep saying chest, but it's like a inventory or storage space. But you'll see what I mean in a second, because once I process all of my, uh, all of my stuff here, and this turns into schematics, I'll fill up the other uh, one with the schematics, meaning that I don't have as much space for this sawdust. So that's why I keep some sawdust here, just for the sake of uh, simplicity and also for the sake of space and sanity. Here I have my shiny rocks, and of course I have to align them as the colors of the rainbow. Roy G. Biv, but it's not quite Roy G. Biv, it's just red, yellow, because there's no orange, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So this is kind of how I... Well, actually, this is more like a turquoise, isn't it? I don't know. I didn't know. I couldn't remember what indigo looked like at the time, so I just kind of threw this here because I thought it made sense. And then throughout here, I have all the gem dust. I keep two stacks of the flawless gems just because I have plenty of space for them. I don't usually convert these at all. My goal is to have all of these at 100 stacks. And then when this eventually hits 100 stacks and this does too, that's when I'll turn them all into gem dust. Until the day I completely max out here, 
I think I'm going to continue doing this method. I think it keeps it nice and organized. Um, as far as this goes, like normally this would be here and this would be here, but actually these shouldn't even be in this chest. These just simply popped up here because I did compulsively count and I haven't had the chance to go through it. Then if I go to the rocks and bones, I have a bunch of rocks here. You know, I have some clay. I keep uh, some stone bodies and stuff like that. Now, mind you, the stone bodies are only in stacks of 50 for me here. So I should have probably made less of these, but I thought I would use them all when I start building stuff for my castles. And I am kind of correct because this used to be all the way up here, but it's no longer. I also put, I also named this uh, rocks and bones. So anything that goes in the grinder, I put here. And you're probably wondering why I put wet stone here. I put wet stone here because it's wet stone, you know, the word stone. So my brain thinks, okay, rock. Um, and then of course I have some stone dust and some bricks and stuff like that. So anything that goes in the grinder plus wet stones are all here. Also, uh, on the other side, I have furs. So, so remind, remember real quick, we have rocks and bones and shiny rocks. Then we have furs, oil, slime. So any kind of oil, uh, this is the reason why this oil here and, and the, furs are so close to center is because sometimes i need to make fire resistance potions and i'll put them here and you need oil for that so you can run through oh oh my that's not good let me grab these oh and this sorry and then <laughs> i go to the furs oil and slime i put all my stuff here i do whatever i need to do and back and forth and back and forth easy access very simple and also i have my plants here so i can go plants oil and then craft so that's how that goes then i have my tailoring now the tailoring stuff is far from its station this is the only thing that's far from its station usually because when i do craft things uh with my my looms or with my tailoring bench it usually takes a long time so i i just kind of let it sit and come back to it when i eventually remember then uh once i go to the um Oh yeah, so once I get through this part, I also have plants. So with these plants, I kind of have to keep in mind what I'm doing. And I have to make sure that the plants are all aligning well with the purposes. So for example, if I need pollen, I have my plants here and I can immediately bring in here to grind. Simple, easy access, less movement overall, perfect. Then if I need plants for, you know, alchemy, I just hop over here and boom. So it's, it's really, you know, that's why it's facing this way so that I'm not having to like, kind of like go this way or that way. Like I don't have to stand a certain position to reach it. I just walk left or right. Here I have all of my seeds of each kind. Now I am going to eventually do a video about all the different seeds in V Rising and the types of seeds you can get, etc., etc. Um, a lot of these seeds, maybe some of you guys have never seen, but don't worry guys, I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm going to definitely put out something about that later. Here I have my ores and melts. So anything that is refined in the furnace will go here. That includes glass, that includes um, iron ingots and stuff like that, radium alloy. The only thing that's a little bit out of place here would be the power core. But the only reason why I put the power cores here is because everything else here in the fabricator and also at the anvil will most likely be using things from ores and melts. Then I have paper and coins. Like I said earlier, I have my paper and my coins, so pretty self-explanatory, as I showed earlier. And then here I have my uh, alchemy items. So I have fish and rats. I keep my rats here, my fish here, stuff like that. And the reason why I have it here at the end, as opposed to closer over here, is because I don't usually make items anymore that will need these fish and rats, other than like maybe the fierce stingers and the swamp dwellers, which are used for the witch potion and the rage potion. And uh, what I'll do is I'll go here, I'll grab whatever I need. Like, let's say I have too many of these fish, right? And too many of these. I don't need more than one stack of these kinds of fish, right? So what I'll do is I'll bring them over here to the blood press or the squisher, as I like to call it. I put them all in the squisher and I'll get plenty of oil, fish bones, stuff like that. When I get the bones, I bring them here, compulsively count, and it's all done perfectly and then so here i have my ancestral weapons uh i actually keep a lot of sanguine weapons here just to make sure that i have uh the base done for the final stuff i haven't gone and bought any more shattered weapons from the treasure uh the treasure collector or the uh, sorry the treasure hunter 
over in Gloomrot, so I don't have any to show you right now, but this is normally where I keep the blue glowy stuff or the orange glowy stuff. The blue glowy things, uh, the shattered blue pieces, I usually just kind of put them to the devourer to be recycled uh, or, you know, my favorite mimic, I guess you could say, to be recycled. And then for the orange ones, I keep them here because they're the high end late game um, shattered weapons. So, yeah, so that's kind of how that works over here in this particular inventory. I keep all the aesthetics and things like that that I really like. Um, you know, my favorite hats, my, oh, and, uh, you know, some harder ones to find, like the scarecrow mask. I was fortunate enough to have someone gift me one, but then I, I found one like yesterday, which is kind of crazy. And then, um, any kind of cosmetic I just put here and all these like robes and stuff. Most of them I like kind of randomly came across and, uh, I keep finding more and more things that I haven't seen before that I really like. So I keep all my cosmetics here. Eventually when I have too many for this, I might, uh, create one here. Like I might put one, maybe a second one of these like here, like right next to it, but I haven't decided how I'm going to organize that just yet. So yeah, that is basically my castle. Oh, I almost forgot. So at the beginning, I mentioned this area here. And I told you that the reason why these are here is a little bit different reason. So here I call this the jewelry box and this is also a jewelry box. So my jewelry box will have all the different jewels. Uh, for those of you who don't know, not every jewel is made equal. And of course, like all of these I've either found or I crafted. Um, most of them I just found. But yeah, uh, just because they're made the same way, um they're, they're made for the same skill does not mean that they're going to have the same stats the same kind of qualities and stuff like that so as you go and you practice it well not practice but as you go and mass create them to try and get better and better stats uh you can put some here just to kind of give to your clan members and stuff so they can just pick it's basically like a nice little jewelry box and um you know they can go and look and pick and choose what they want the crafting table that way nothing is wasted of course then you have you know the crafting table here and all that and of course the gem cutting table which i'm going to compulsively count for right now get that going and then uh, as you can see i have these done i'm going to take these back to the shiny rocks pile and put them away and then of course uh, i'm going to go to the empty containers i'm going to compulsively count pull this back uh pull this away and put that in there and then i'm also going to put the major explosive box here as you can as you can probably see it's it's pretty fast that i'm able to kind of organize my inventory because everything is already preset everything is already methodically kind of chosen out so yeah this is basically the method to my madness if you have any questions and or you want to make any comments and you know if there's anything in this video that you like or have questions about feel free to ask um, I'd be more than happy to answer those questions for you. And I hope that this video was very informative. It's a little bit long. It's probably going to be maybe like 30, 25 minutes long, something like that. So I hope that you found it all useful and helpful and great for the information. And yeah, I hope to see you guys next time. Take care. If you really like this video and found it helpful, please leave a like, share, and subscribe, and also comment below and let me know if you like this kind of video. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Also, I stream three times a week on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm usually streaming either V Rising or Planet Zoo, so feel free to stop by and say hello. You can also follow me on other platforms such as Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram if you haven't already. You can find those in the links below in the description of this video. I've also just opened up a Patreon, so if you're interested in supporting the channel that way, feel free to do so. See you next time. Sholo out.